Ludwig van Beethoven was born in December 1770 in Bonn, present-day Germany. His grandfather was a professional singer and musician from present-day Belgium, then moved to Bonn when he was 21. Even though Ludwig was three when his grandfather died, he left on him an everlasting impression. Ludwig started piano and violin with his dad, Johann, at a very young age. His father was also a musician who married the daughter of the Elector of Trier's head chef. Johann recognized Ludwig's talent at a young age and became his first teacher. His dad was like, oh snap, look at how successful Leopold Mozart got from just having two prodigy kids. He even lied about Ludwig's age on the concert posters just to make him look more prodigy. Hello everyone, in this video we're going to see how Beethoven's portraits might have looked in real life from when he was young to when he died. If you're new to my channel, welcome. Here on Mortal Faces, I recreate how individuals we read about might have looked in real life, and I also untangle family trees. Lots more on my channel, you can also find some merch in my new shop. Thank you for watching, subscribe for more recreations, and let me know in the comments who you want to see in upcoming videos. Parents kung fuing their children to become what they never were goes way back and Johann van Beethoven embraced this trend back in the 18th century. He was an abusive alcoholic. As his son's teacher, Johann was hardly a disinterested listener. He would wake up his son during the evening to practice well into the night. Every time Ludwig hit a sour note, his father's hands came crashing down on his son's with a loud discordant thwack. Johann demanded that his son start again over and over until he could play the piece perfectly. When he was 16, he went to Vienna because he wanted Mozart to be his mentor. Whether they met or not, his stay was short because Ludwig had to go home because his mother was sick. After his mother died, his father's drinking problem got worse, so he had to take on the responsibility of supporting the family. Unfortunately, in order to do that, he had to up his game. In 1792, he moved to Vienna, and his first teacher there was a dude, Joseph Hayden, who wrote the Surprise Symphony. He also started cultivating patrons. How this works is basically you have to compose or perform wherever and whenever your patrons want, and you'll get financial support in return. It's basically a sugar daddy. But he did get karma on his father. His father's reputation was getting worse, ruining all that was built by his late grandfather. With two younger brothers to take care of, he petitioned the elector to make him head of the house and give him half his father's salary. This was granted, and his father eventually shriveled up and died not too long after. One of the most important women in his life was a suitor called Josephine. Despite it not being socially acceptable for nobles to marry commoners, Josephine and Ludwig were in a very close relationship. He wrote her numerous passionate love letters, and she is believed to be the recipient of a famous mysterious love letter addressed to his immortal beloved. Historians think there may have been another important woman in his life called Elise, but her identity remains unknown, and then there was also Julie Guicciardi and Therese Malfatti. Yep, everyone plays it. Many of his sonatas are considered master learns for many piano students today. If you walk past practice rooms and music units, chances you'll hear a handful of pianos crying and screaming while learning his Moonlight Sonata. At the end of the 18th century, Ludwig was beginning to realize he was gradually losing his hearing. He moved to a small town in Austria called Heiligenstadt, as recommended by his doctor. While he was there, he wrote a famous letter to his brother. Yo, I actually can't with this. Like having to shout, I can't hear every time people talk to me, it's just so painful. I'm so done, I hate people, I'm never going out of my house again. Also, by the way, I really want to kill myself because of this, but I feel I have so much art in me that I still need to present it before I die, so I didn't. In early 1804, Beethoven finished composing his third symphony, which marks the transition between classicism and romanticism. He's like the daddy of romanticism. The first movement alone is almost the length of an entire classical symphony. And this is why we say Beethoven was way ahead of his time. He also started to move away from the conventional structure set by the boomers before him by introducing a long coda at the end of a first movement. 
Instead of using the coda to quickly wrap up the movement, this was used to further develop and explore themes. People at the start thought his symphony was alright, but it was too long and seemed endless. Thinking he was a hero in the French Revolution that overthrew the monarchy, Beethoven dedicated his symphony to Napoleon, its new leader, but he soon learned that Napoleon crowned himself emperor. He got so mad he scratched out the title violently. Soon after the completion of Eroica Symphony, Beethoven started drafting what would eventually become this really obscure symphony that you probably haven't heard of. It's definitely not recognized as the most recognizable musical motive in musical history. He began to compose his ninth symphony in 1822. He was like, what crazy stuff haven't I done yet? Ah, maybe use a chorus and vocal soloist in a symphony. Hmm. By this time, he had pretty much gone completely deaf, but he still insisted on conducting the premiere himself. As recorded by violinist Joseph Baum, Beethoven himself conducted. That is, he stood in front of a conductor's stand and threw himself back and forth like a madman. At one moment, he stretched to his full height. At the next, he crouched down to the floor. He flared about with his hands and feet as though he wanted to play all the instruments and sing all the chorus parts. He was a few bars from when the musicians were playing, so he was still waving his arms when the music ended. In 1827, three years after the premiere of his Ninth Symphony, Beethoven had died from illness. He was 56. It could have possibly been lead poisoning, but he also had excessive liver damage. Later in history, some other prominent composers also died after writing their Ninth Symphony while penning their Tenth. Not only did Beethoven change forever the course of classical music history, he apparently created a curse that would kill off composers after their Ninth Symphony. Beethoven never had any children, but one of his younger brothers did, and the Beethoven last name continued through the male line up until 1917, where the last direct male Beethoven died without male heirs. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Subscribe for more historical recreations. Each of your subscriptions does help this channel grow. It allows me to continue making more content for you. Let me know in the comments who you want to see next. I do make a list of all your suggestions. And I will see you in the next one.